All right. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us here at the IACAC Virtual College Exploration. Uh, for those of you in the crowd or watching this recording later on, welcome. So for this evening, so your camera and your microphones are turned off. So we, our panelists today cannot hear or see you. So what they're gonna need to do for you to engage with them is to uh, put questions in the Q&A. So you can totally put your questions in there. And then actually today we have two incredible representatives from Minnesota State Mankato that's gonna be one giving the presentation, the other kind of working with questions on the back end. So you can do it throughout the presentation. There are more sessions like this one today. You can sign up for those at iacac.org. And as well as there are more recordings like this one will be available later on, but there's others that you can see as well. And so without further ado, I'm going to pass it off to David to talk about Minnesota State Mankato. Cool. Uh, thank you again for kind of introducing me. Um, I will get this presentation up and going and we'll begin in just like a second here. Awesome. So we are Minnesota State University Mankato. Uh, we're located just about 85 miles south of the Twin Cities metro area. So uh, if you are from that area or you call that area home, definitely able to visit and return there for like holidays and things of that nature if you'd like. Um, cool, let's start with some general information about the college. All right, so we have been around for a little over 150 years at this point in time. Uh, we started back in 1868 as the Mankato Normal School, uh, which was a teacher's college in Southern Minnesota. Um, we kind of came to the realization at some point that we couldn't support a college of our growing size on one program, so we expanded and presently we are sitting at right around 130 different undergraduate programs. Hopefully that means that we have a little bit of something for everyone and we would love to be that place that you continue your education. Uh, presently, we are sitting at about 14,500 students, a little bit more than that at this point in time. And that does place us as the second largest public institution in the state of Minnesota. Um, I always want to say that like we're a close second to the University of Minnesota, but the numbers don't necessarily bear that out and that's totally fine with us. So one thing we're able to really focus on is our class size though. So presently we're sitting at a 20 to one student to faculty ratio at our institution. Um, and that's honestly where we want to stay for the foreseeable future. Um, the quality of education our students are able to receive as a result of those smaller class sizes is something we really do cherish. So we'll try and keep it there. All right. Following your graduation, we are sitting at about a 93% job placement rate. So this number is gathered from our graduating seniors within a year of their graduation date. And so we're doing pretty well in that regard. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about some of our resources that we are able to offer to our students. Um, but in general, just note um, that job placement is one of our key areas that we're measuring. And we're gonna try and keep those numbers really strong in the future as well. All right. Um, following that, we are also a national leader in undergraduate research, and what that really means for our students is that we do dedicate a lot of our resources to ensuring that if research is something that's important to you and you would like to pursue, uh, you have that opportunity to do so during your undergraduate career, right? So we don't necessarily want your first experience with research to be at the grad school level, uh, at the master's or the doctoral level. We want to provide as many opportunities as possible. Uh, to do so while you're still in undergrad doing your bachelor's degree. So we provide those resources here. Uh, we also have a little over 200 plus student organizations. Uh, that's really cool. Um, so we of course want you to focus on your academics primarily, um, but we also want you to have some fun during your time here. Um, a couple of student organizations that I think that started in the last couple of years that are really interesting are going to be things like our Cloud Watchers Association, which I hope is still around. Um, which was really just a student organization dedicated to hanging out with each other, making sure everyone felt welcome on our campus and watching the clouds go by together. Um, another one that I thought was really cool as well was our Pointless Debate Club, which was at the time uh, predominantly philosophy majors that were using some of the rhetorical devices uh, that you learn in philosophy to argue topics like is a hot dog a sandwich. Really, really fun. Loved, loved them to death. Hope they're still around as well. All right. Um, as stated, we're also just south of the Twin Cities metro area, so feel free to visit that area if you've never been there, or if you call that area home, you can definitely head back for weekends. Cool. So starting with our top five most popular programs, are, uh, starting at number one, we've got our biology program, followed by our nursing program, psychology, and business management, and then elementary education rounding out our top five. Um, I myself am a graduate from both the psychology program and the biology program. And then I came back from my master's in education. So one, 
if you have questions about those programs, I'm totally happy to speak about my experience within those programs. Uh, feel free to email me. I'll give you my contact information at the end. Um, and then two, um, really, uh, for a lot of our other programs that we offer here, we'll probably end up having to refer you to some of our online resources. Uh, either myself or Anders can give you information about those programs as well in the Q&A in the chat. All right, some of the unique programs that we have at our institution that we're really proud of. Uh, number one is going to be our aviation program. We have the only four-year aviation program in the state of Minnesota at the moment. So a lot of our students do seek us out specifically for that purpose, and we're happy to provide that for our students. Um, back when I originally made this presentation, we had the number one ranked construction management program in the country. Um, and I know over the time that I have uh, really tracked those statistics, uh, we have maintained in the top five in the country for construction management. And so that program is also pretty fantastic as well. Uh, sports management is a program that we do offer as a full four-year program. Um, some institutions will kind of uh, lump sports management into a more general management program, but we do have that as a standalone four-year program here at MSU. Um, our dental hygiene program does have access to a full and functional dental clinic um, that offers some fairly basic services to members of our community for a very discounted rate. Um, I utilized this quite a bit when I was an undergrad. I love that it existed um, and still does exist, of course. Um, and we'd encourage you to check them out if that's something you're interested in as well. And then our theater program um, is in the top 1% of theater ticket sales for a college level theater program. Um, that's really awesome to see. Um, it's great from an administrator standpoint and all that good stuff, but really that just means that we have a lot of opportunities to offer to our students in those areas. So if you're interested in checking out one of our theater, our music, or our dance performances, uh, that's something that I would highly encourage you to check out during your time here. All right. Cool. Uh, there are a lot of resources that we provide to our students as well. Um, starting a little bit, we don't have time to go over all of them today, of course, uh, but a few that I wanna highlight really quickly are going to be first, our Career Development Center. Um, they are a one-stop shop for everything involved in the employment process, both while you're in school, if you're looking for like part-time employment or something like that, as well as when you're getting close to graduation and are looking for a career following your degree program. So um, they do a little bit of everything. Um, they do interview prep, of course, which a lot of uh, career developmental centers in many campuses will offer. Uh, but for me, they actually went as far as to critique my outfit when I was applying for, the inst or for this position I'm currently in. Um, apparently, it's a fashion faux pas to wear a tie that is lighter in color than the shirt under it. I did not know this, um, so I changed my tie really quick, got the job. It was probably the tie changed, right, right? All right. Um, our Center for Academic Success um, is a phenomenal resource that we have available to us. They will help with anything that you may need as a student in order to be successful academically, right? Uh, we do also have access to a tutoring center on our campus. So if you do require tutoring services, um, do note that that is not an extra expense that you'll have to take on. We have that available for you uh, as a part of our Center for Academic Success. Um, the last opportunity that I wanna talk about really quickly is going to be our multicultural center. Um, we have a fairly diverse student population, especially if you consider our international student population as well. Um, and we have students representing about 93 different countries at this point in time, and that's awesome. Uh, the Multicultural Center will put on events throughout the year to help our student population, our larger student population, uh, really become acquainted for the first time, perhaps, with some cultures that they may not necessarily have experienced in the past. Definitely check out those events. Uh, we love that they exist, and we're going to keep maintaining them in the future as well. All right. Now, moving into the admissions criteria as well. So we've tried our best to simplify the admissions criteria over the last couple of years. Um, so these are our automatic admissions criteria listed on the screen today. If you as a applying student uh, are, in your are in your senior year and you are in the top 50% of your high school class, uh, have a cumulative GPA of a 3.0 or better, or you have a 21 composite ACT score or better, um, you are essentially guaranteed admission to our institution. Do note that you don't need to meet all of these requirements, just one of the three of them on the screen today. Um, we've tried our best to make it as simple as possible. This is what we've come up with at this point in time. Awesome. On to this next thing. If you meet the requirements, you already know what the decision will be. 
So the application process is pretty straightforward as well. So first, we'll have our students submit an online application that can be found on our website. Um, if you do have questions about that, Anders can uh, put that information in or can give you that information as a part of our, um, as in the Q&A. Um, the second step here is going to be submitting your $20 application fee. Um, generally speaking, this would be required for all of our students, but uh, this year, if you are a senior, um, during the entirety of the month of October, if you submit your application fee during October, um, that $20 application fee will be waived at this point in time, so feel free to do that at this point. Um, the third step is going to be submitting your high school transcripts. Feel free to reach out to your school's guidance counselor to see how they typically would submit those transcripts to us. Uh, they'll be able to point you in the right direction more often than not. Um, and if you do have any questions, feel free to reach out to us as well. And then this fourth step here would generally be to submit your ACT or your SAT scores. Now we've had a lot of concerns around students not being able to take the ACT um, due to closures of testing facility sites. Um, and that's totally fine. So for the fall of 2020, as well as for the fall of 2021, uh, we have made the ACT or SAT requirement optional at this point in time. So if you are unable to take that exam due to concerns around the coronavirus, uh, do note that it is optional and you will not be negatively impacted by not having the ability to take it at this point in time. Cool. And that kind of breaks down the admissions process uh, and the application process. Generally speaking, once we've received the last piece of information we need from you, uh, we'll make a decision within seven to 10 business days on average, um, and we'll let you know of that decision moving forward. Awesome. Okay, breaking down academic year cost. So this is an estimate that is based on the academic year that we're presently in. So for when you all will join us, that this may be a little bit different, uh, but bear with us. You can find updated information on our websites as well in our financial aid page. Um, so for Minnesota, Wisconsin, and Manitoba residents, you would all be considered in-state receiving students. So your tuition and fees would be uh, right on average of about $8,438 for the academic year for fall and spring semester, right? And that's combined. Uh, there's a couple of values kind of rolled up in this number uh, that you may not necessarily know about in general, right? So the first is that our college has a system called banded tuition. And so what that means is that all of our full-time students uh, in a given semester will pay the same rate. So once you hit 12 credits in a given semester, you are now considered a full-time student. And if at that point you choose to take a few additional classes, uh, you're actually getting those classes at no additional cost. The one thing that I would consider looking out for is that you cannot go above 18 credits using this band of tuition dollars. Cool. Uh, so definitely keep that in mind, but you're getting a little bit more bang for your buck if you do choose to take a few additional classes. The second thing, and I think the most important thing, is that uh, your student fees are already included. On merit of you being a student at Minnesota State Mankato, you have to pay these student fees. And so these student fees are going to pay for a lot of the resources we talked about a few slides ago. And so I want to make it clear that if you need something in order to be successful during your time at college, at our institution especially, right, utilize these services as much or as little as you need them, right? A lot of students will come in and think that by me using them, I'm taking something away from someone else. And we wanna make it very clear that if you need it, you've already paid for it by merit of being a student here, use them as much as you need them. Cool. So below that, you're gonna see a total and that total includes an estimated cost for living on campus, right? This estimate is going to be based on a specific subset of our offerings as far as housing and dining options are considered. Um, and that's going to come in the form of the renovated double room type, um, as well as the Maverick Anytime Meal Plan. Um, those are both fairly middle of the road options that we offer at Minnesota State. And as a result, if you do choose other options, uh, do note that that total will change accordingly. We will talk about the different room types that we have available for our students in a few slides. We won't have time to do the same for the different meal plans. And so definitely check out our um, residential life website for a full breakdown of the different uh, meal plans that you can choose. Cool. All right. Now, about 95% of our student population utilizes the financial aid process to pay for at least a portion of their college experience. This is generally done through a system called the FAFSA or the Free Application for Federal Student Aid. And what this will do is it'll give you information around three different sources of funding for your college experience in the form of grants, loans, and work-study opportunities. 
Uh, grants are essentially dollars that you won't necessarily need to pay back after you graduate, loans you will need to pay back, and a work study opportunity is a part-time job on campus to help pay for a portion of your college. This is of course a simplified view, but it'll work for now. We provided our university code, but as you are filling out the FAFSA, there is a university lookup tool. Um, and so if you have this and write it down, fantastic. If you lose it, you should be able to find it again pretty easily. Now, on October 1st of your senior year in high school, you can fill out your FAFSA for the first time. And so the FAFSA for this year opened on October 1st. It opens on October 1st every year. And if you go ahead and fill that out, that'll give you financial aid information uh, that will pertain to the fall of 2021, the spring of 2022, as well as the summer of 2022 as well, right? So go ahead and do that at any point moving forward and submit that information to us and any other institutions that you may be interested in joining. All right, in the spring, generally speaking, late February, early March on average, it may change a little bit though from year to year, we'll start sending out preliminary financial aid award letters that'll give you estimates as far as how much you can expect to receive in those grants, loans, and works to the opportunities there, right? Um, essentially, our budgets are finalized every summer, and so when those budgets are finalized, we'll also be sending you a second award letter as well. Those will be finalized numbers, but do note that over the, over the many years we've been doing this, we've gotten pretty good at doing those preliminary estimates. And so generally speaking, the preliminary award letter that you would have received in the spring and the final award letter you will receive in the summer should be very close to one another. All right, if there are any questions regarding the financial aid process, uh, feel free to ask us and we'll answer whatever questions we can. Um, but also uh, I would recommend reaching out to our Office of Student and Financial Services and they can be found at either campus hub at mnsu.edu or at 507-389-1866. All right, we have a couple of scholarship opportunities that I wanna talk about really quickly as well. Uh, the first is going to be a series of micro scholarships that is uh, offered through a system called Raise Me, right? And so we'll uh, invite you to make a profile on Raise Me. You can either use the link that is on the screen today or you can go to raise.me uh, raise uh, um, and make your own profile and then follow our institution later. Uh, we'd be happy to take that profile from you. But essentially, as you're making your profile, you'll fill in information like various grades that you've received while you're in high school, um, extracurricular activities that you've been a part of, things like visiting a campus visit or something like that as well. And for each of those activities, we have assigned a dollar amount to them. So uh, if you follow our institution by January 15th of your senior year, uh, that running total that will have been racking up as you fill in more and more activities, uh, that'll actually be given to you as a one-time scholarship when you enter into our institution. One thing that I should note for these merit-based scholarships is that there is a minimum GPA requirement of a 3.0 or better, but for that raise me requirement there, if you do meet that requirement and you make that profile and submit it to us by January 15th, you will receive that scholarship there. Cool. We also have a system called Scholarship Finder that we created in-house. And this system uh, compiles scholarship opportunities that we offer as an institution into one place for you. So once you've applied to our institution and have been accepted, you now have access to Scholarship Finder. Uh, you can go ahead and log into Scholarship Finder using mnsu.academicworks.com and you'll log in using the same star ID and password that you'll create as a part of your initial application. Now, Scholarship Finder is a great tool because it lists a bunch of scholarship opportunities and it'll actually filter out scholarship opportunities that you wouldn't be able to apply for uh, for various reasons. Uh, things like some scholarships are specific to a specific program. If you're not in that program, you probably won't see that opportunity on Scholarship Finder at all. Uh, so what that means is that if you see it on Scholarship Finder after you've created your profile, uh, I would go ahead and apply for it if you think you, uh, if you, think you meet the criteria for it. All right, uh, the last opportunity I'm gonna talk about today is going to be our presidential scholarship. Uh, it is $20,000 in total, uh, which would be $5,000 per year over the course of the four years you're expected to study with us. Now this opportunity does have fairly strict requirements. So uh, if you do have a 3.8 or better GPA in high school, uh, you are eligible to apply for this opportunity. Um, and after the application, we'll bring you back for an interview. And from the pool of interviewees, we would select the individuals to receive these scholarships here. Uh, we encourage you to apply, honestly. It'd be, it, we'd one, love to hear from you, and two, it is a great opportunity there. Oops, sorry about that. 
Uh, moving into a discussion on living on campus. So we do not require any of our students to live on campus at any point during their college career. But with that being said, about 90% of our first year students do choose to live on campus even still. And statistically, we've noticed that students who live on campus for at least that first year tend to have higher GPAs, higher retention rates, and down the road, higher graduation rates as well. Uh, so while it's not a requirement, it is something that we do recommend. So if you are interested in this opportunity, we'd love to have you on campus. We have five main residence communities at Minnesota State Mankato. These first four, Julia Sears, Preska, Crawford, and McElroy, are going to be centrally located to a lot of our different academic buildings on campus. And so what that means for you is that one, they're very convenient, about a five to 10 minute journey from your dorm to your classes. Um, Generally speaking, I had not more than 15 minutes, right? Uh, so definitely utilize that convenience there. Now, Stadium Heights is also a great option, but it is a couple of blocks off campus. And we'll show you what these uh, look like just a little bit in a few slides. Um, but if you do choose this option, it is still a great option, but you'll want to make sure you're accounting for the amount of time it takes to journey from your dorm to your classes. And just keep that in mind. All right. Cool. So here's a breakdown of the different room types that we offer. So the basic room type located in Crawford and McElroy, and then our renovated double room type uh, offered in Crawford, McElroy, and Presca. Uh, the price points are a little bit different for these rooms here, and both of these will give you access to a shared community restroom, right? Um, that is all well and fine for the majority of our students. Uh, I personally stayed in a renovated double during my time as a student here, and I will say that our uh, cleaning staff and our maintenance staff was phenomenal. So. I never had an issue with cleanliness and I lived on a floor with 50 something other guys. So absolutely great opportunity there, right? Now, the main difference between these two room types here is that the basic does not have an air conditioner in the individual unit, whereas the renovated does, okay? So um, essentially, if you can survive without an air conditioner for a couple of months, essentially get to when it gets cold in Minnesota, which is seemingly earlier and earlier, we got snow in October this year, um, they'll turn on the heat, and your experience will be very similar to the renovated double at that point. Awesome. Now, if you want a little bit more privacy, we do have the semi-suite room type as well. Uh, the, the room itself is a fair amount larger than our renovated and our basic double. Um, and then it would also give you access to a semi-private restroom area as well. Um, so essentially the two individuals in this room, as well as another room right next door, which would have one or two individuals in it as well, uh, would be the only individuals that have access to that shared uh, restroom in the middle. Um, keep that in mind. Uh, with that said, these are located in both Julius Sears as well as Prescott Hall, but outside of that, they're very similar to one another. So not much of a choice between Sears and Prescott, except for maybe preference. All right, um, apart from the individual room, everyone in these first two options here uh, we'll have access to a shared lounge as well on your floor, which has things like a, a larger living area, as well as a communal kitchen as well. So keep that in mind too. All right. Moving forward to Stadium Heights, these have apartment style uh, residence communities located over there. So essentially these are three, four and five bedroom apartments in which you can do a single or a double room within. So uh, you are getting a little bit more space. Do note that these apartments are furnished as well. So if you are kind of thinking about living on campus and are maybe on the fence about that decision um, and you don't necessarily want to buy a bunch of furniture, this may be a great option for you because these do come fully furnished, right? Um, these are off campus on Stadium Heights. There is a shuttle that goes between the main um, campus as well as the Stadium Heights apartments. And so even if it is super cold for winter, um, you can still use that shuttle service to get to your classes and not be outside just too long. Awesome. Now, if you are planning to live on campus, here's what that process is going to look like for you. Uh, the first step is going to be completing the online application. Uh, the application window will open on October 1st this year. Um, and there is a priority deadline of March 1st. Sorry, my face is right in front of it. Yep. Um, March 1st, um, and essentially you can still apply for housing after that March 1st deadline, but when we get later in the process and are talking about uh, things like room and roommate selection, uh, you may not have access to those services and will essentially be placed in whatever is still available at that point. Okay, 
Um, second, signing the housing contract. This is essentially a document that lays out the rules that you're expected to follow if you choose to live on campus. Um, once that's signed, you're bound by those rules, mission accomplished. Um, three, submitting the $250 down payment to live on campus. Once we, once we receive that down payment, your spot to live on campus is saved for you, right? Um, so do keep that in mind. We recognize that plans may not necessarily be finalized immediately. So if you do end up having to change your plans to live on campus for any reason whatsoever, let us know of that change of plans by July 1st and 200 of that $250 down payment can be refunded to you at that point in time. This last step is going to be room and roommate selection. So if you do plan to live on campus, um, apply before that priority deadline and you will have the option to uh, designate who you would like to live with if you have someone in mind, as well as the type of room that you would prefer to live in. But these are assigned based on a first come first serve basis. Um, and as a result, the earlier you apply for housing and submit that $250 down payment, the more likely you are to get uh, the room type that you know you're, you, you would prefer. All right, and that is that process. All right, that concludes the majority of the information that I wanna go over with you uh, this evening. So a uh, quick checklist. The first step is of course, submitting your application. This second step didn't come up in our initial presentation, but essentially we recognize that as high school students, you're probably looking at a couple of different institutions at the same time. And that's totally fine. Be immersed in that process. We hope that we are a great fit for you and are ultimately the choice that you end up going with. But if we're not, we totally understand that. As you go forward, um, if, or if you've made the decision that MSU is gonna be your home for the next couple of years, go ahead and do the second step of confirming your enrollment and that essentially lets us know to expect you in an upcoming term. You can still change your mind at this point and that's totally fine. It doesn't lock you into anything, but it does alert us to the fact that you're planning on joining us in an upcoming term. After that is done, you will then be able to apply for housing. So feel free to do that at your earliest convenience. And then following that step, or maybe before that step as well, uh, you should also submit your FAFSA. Now the FAFSA, I believe at this point in time, allows you to submit financial aid information to up to 10 different institutions at once. Uh, so feel free to submit it to us as well as any other institutions that you may be thinking about attending. Uh, scholarship search, we provided some tools and resources for you to search for scholarships. There are plenty out there. Um, so definitely apply for as many as you can. And then following that, uh, June, July, and August, we will begin hosting our summer orientations. So if you're planning on joining us for the fall, attend one of these orientation sessions. We're gonna get you a lot more information about different resources that are available on our campus. Um, and then we're also gonna partner you with an academic advisor that'll help you uh, select your first semester's worth of classes as well. Um, this last step, joining the math fam, right? So we recognize over the next couple of years for many of you, there will be plenty of things for you to celebrate, right? Some awesome things are gonna happen in your life. Um, soon, there's going to be things like uh, getting your acceptance package from Minnesota State, getting your diploma from high school and all of that good stuff. In the future, it's gonna be things like actually attending your first day of class, um, getting into your academic program about a year in is when most students will apply for that. All of those cool things. And then eventually graduation as well. Um, essentially, we want to celebrate those major milestones and accomplishments with you. So if you end up taking pictures and posting them on social media about these events, uh, you can hashtag those pic pictures with hashtag MavFam, and that lets our social media team know that those photos exist. At which point we may feature them on our website, we may feature them on our social media platforms, um, but essentially we would like to celebrate with you. If that's something you're interested in, feel free to take advantage. If not, don't worry about it just too much. All right, and that is everything that I have for you today. Um, we will be here for the next about 15 minutes, I guess 14 minutes technically. Uh, so if you do have questions, feel free to put those in the Q&A feature. We'll be happy to answer those. Um, and yeah, my name is David Cox. My contact information is on the screen. Happy to meet with you. All righty, thank you, David. I definitely think we'll give it a few minutes and uh, see if there are any questions from the crowd today. Give that a couple more minutes. And if there's not, um, well, I think we'll also maybe cut a little early and give ourselves a little bit earlier of an evening, but we'll definitely give it a couple more minutes and then uh, I'll have some final announcements at the end. Sure.
Uh, yeah, thank you for your question. So the question was asked in the chat, uh, what type of GPA do we need? Um, so for our general admissions, if you have about a 3.0, um, if you have about a 3.0 at the time of your application, you would be considered for automatic admissions. Uh, alternatively, if you have the opportunity to take the ACT, um, you can go ahead and submit your ACT score. And if it's a 21 or higher, that requirement actually drops down to about a 2.7 for automatic admissions. Yeah, so I know we have a couple of offerings, like actually a few uh, that you may be interested in. So I know primarily we have mechanical and electrical engineering. Um, and then I think some of the other subsections are also available as well. Uh, Anders, if you wanna link the um, programs of study page um, as well, uh, that'll be a really good resource for you. And just to clarify for those in the crowd that might be watching the recording later on, uh, the question was uh, engineering classes for offered. Oh, yeah, my apologies, yeah. Alrighty, it looks like there aren't any more questions. Thank you so much for your time for joining us today, everyone. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and do some final announcements and then I will just make sure there aren't any last second questions that as I do my announcements and then I think we'll go ahead and close up early for the evening. Sound good? All right, so. Thank you again so much for joining us today with IACAC. Uh, and also, you know, thank you for joining David and Anders for this fantastic presentation about Minnesota State Mankato. Definitely the Mavericks. Uh, you know, I was born and raised in Minnesota. It definitely has a soft spot in my family. So definitely got some love from Minnesota State Mankato. Um, after you close this video today, you will have a quick four question survey. Please complete that um, as that will um, be very helpful for the IACAC going forward, especially these virtual events. Also, again, reminder, you can sign up and you can see more sessions like this one today if you go to iacac.org, as well as see some recordings like this one will be recorded. It may not happen immediately. It might take a couple of days, but you can also share this with any family and friends that might be interested as well. So just a last second check in the Q&A. At this moment, I don't see any more questions, so I think we're going to call it a night. Thank you so much, everyone. Be healthy. Be safe. Bye now.